Welcome back to another episode of This Week on the Homestead. We have a lot of things to accomplish this week. We are working on adding fruit trees, we are getting bees, and doing more with the garden. So I'm going to bring you along with us. This is the goal of this series, is just to bring you along in sort of an unedited way as we make this property into a homestead. They, they have been locked up. Do you have your camera? 6.30 this morning, so. Okay, stand back home. Judo, oh, guys, do you get stung? They're gonna bring the bees out now, so we need to give them some space, okay? Cause Go get my kids. you can't necessarily predict what they're gonna do right now. Yeah. Jesus, get back with there gonna be lots of bees. You want your bale? You can bring it down. Alright, you got like a little bellows thing on there? Yeah, I just use sawdust. You know, oh, just wood that I've cut, yeah. Yeah, and then it's, you got your little paper in there, or is that the best? Heat tech. Okay, just heat tech, okay. So you just put the smoke, like... You just want to smoke them. Once a, one bee stings, you're gonna put off like a pheromone. So the smoke prevents them, the other bees, from being able to smell that pheromone. Oh! Okay, that makes a yeah. lot of sense. Otherwise, they're all going to try to attack Because yeah, they send out the pheromone and say, hey. Yeah, wait, there's an intruder. Yeah. So basically, like, oh. this is just in case you get stung. Yeah. How often do you get stung? It depends on the day. Do you get a music? Every day? I, uh, <laughs> he doesn't I even swell up. Yeah. You know, yeah. Still hurts, but I don't swell right, up. Right, right. So why do you get stung? Just sick? assume I know exactly zero about bees. Yeah. I know okay. nothing about them, except for that they honey is good. Oh, it's, yeah. Um, so there's the queen bee, there's drone bees, worker bees, and nurse bees. But the nurse bees, after about two weeks, then they become foragers, so they become the worker bees. Okay. And they'll do that for about four weeks, and then they're done. Their, their life is over. Okay. Uh, the queen can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day. And for a worker bee to hatch, or a nurse bee to hatch, it's 21 days. For a drone to hatch, it's 17 days. And for the queen to hatch, or I'm sorry, for a drone to hatch, it's 19 days, and for the queen to hatch, it's 16 days. Okay. The queen has one job, the drones have one job, and that's to mate the queen. Yeah. Once they mate the queen, they die. Okay. And then at, going into like the winter, they will kill and drag out all of the drone bees because they don't want to feed them throughout the winter. Oh, man. So they, yeah, it's like carnage. They just kill yeah, them and drag wow. them out and throw them on the ground. Oh my gosh. So. Dang. Who does that? The workers? Yep. Okay. Yep. The drone bees are the only male bee in the box. The worker bees and the queen bee are all female. Okay. And then how is it that a new queen comes about? So if they fill up this box and they need more room and you don't put another box on for them, they'll produce another queen cell and then that queen will go off and get mated. She'll come back and the old queen will leave with half of the hive. Really? Otherwise, yeah. they'll stay. Otherwise, they'll stay. Yeah. So do you like add to this? You add boxes. Every yeah. Year? As they start to run out of room, Okay. You want it to be almost darn near full before you put a box on it. Um, because what happens is bees would rather build up than build out. So if they don't have these frames full yet and you put another box, they'll start building up and they'll leave these okay. empty on the outside. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and then once you get going, you'll notice anytime that there's queen cells in the middle of a frame, that's for them to swarm. If the queen cell is at the very bottom of the frame, that means they don't like the queen that's in here and they're going to replace her. So those are, you just need to be wary you whenever you want that. Uh, you do. That means that means that they're not happy. Either she's not laying as many eggs as they want or she's just a bad queen and then they'll go ahead and replace her. <laughs> that's so weird. So the queen is in charge until they don't like her anymore. You can't help, but, hum you can't help yeah. but humanize it. I was going to say I got metaphors for this. Yeah, you so... just, you can't help it, but you can't do that. <laughs> but like the thing you want to watch for is more than one queen cell. They that's... all make a bunch. Uh, the uh, lady uh, that we dropped hers off this morning, I pulled seven of them out of her. So what do you watch for for the swarm? The queen cells. And okay. I'm sure we'll find a few in here. We've had a lot swarming here lately. Like in the last nine days, I think we've had like 17 swarms. And that just means your whole thing just leaves? Half of them. Oh, okay. And gotcha. they'll fly into a tree. So you can just kind of like go up and scoop them and just put them down in a box. What? Yeah. Once you get the first one out, then they come out easy. Oh. You can see here, you see the shiny? Um, yeah. Right here. That's all honey. Okay. 
So that's honey that they have not fanned and dried out yet. Okay, and then those ones that are sealed over are those okay, so the, eggs? Here. Okay. These are gonna these are cap drones. So they kind of got like a hump to them. Okay. So that's the dry oh, okay. honey. Okay. And then that's in their store that would that be like a storage for them? Yeah. Yep. Food for or? this yep. Here's okay. queen cups. Oh, all right. So on this rain, there's five of them. Oh, wow. On just that side, I don't know about the other side. Is that your queens? That's a dumb question. I think so. Uh -huh. And even when the lid's on, they're able to move from frame to frame. Correct. Crawling over the top. Yeah. Yep, they need about three-eighths of an inch. See how all these are like black and the yeah. leaves have a tint of orange? Uh-huh, yeah. You that's can totally pollen. Okay, that's that's like a store to be yeah. turned into yeah. or... Huh, okay. Everything they've been collecting off of the flowers. They're always going to find a source of pollen, I guess. Correct. And now you're just searching for those queen cells. Yeah. This here, that what you're seeing there, yes. that's all cat brood. That's all going to be baby bees. And if you look down inside those holes, you see the, the white in the bottom? Yes. That's what they call larva. And then it's going to turn okay. in. It, as soon as it gets to a certain age, then they'll put a cap on it. And, and then, then they'll cap it. Okay. And then when it hatches, it turns into, uh, turns into a bee. Right here. You see her darken up there. See how big she is compared to everybody else? And she's she's not doing that same motion oh, as everybody right, else. Right there. Yeah, I see her. And her queen, she's over here. Now these guys are buzzing like yeah, crazy. I put her back in because they they're... That is really interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah. She's the one bee you do not want to smash. Yeah. The rest, I mean, you're going to smash bees when you put the top back on it. But she's the one bee that you do not want to smash. You're in trouble. Yeah. It's on. Well, no, they'll actually try to make a new queen if she's got, like, new eggs in there. They yeah. can actually, from the time it's, the egg, egg is yeah. laid, they've got three days to decide if it's they feed it royal jelly. Yeah. This always has to go up. Okay, that helps the humidity in the box. This is an entrance reducer. I have a big entrance. Okay. You can do the little entrance. Or you can close them off completely if you want to move them. So every day between like 2 and 3 o'clock, they'll do what's an orientation flight. So all the bees that have hatched within the last 24 hours will not leave the hive until around 2 to 3. And all the bees that have hatched will come out. They'll fly in like a big circle. And then they'll go back in, and that is their orientation flight. So they can fly three miles away, and since they did that, they'll know right where to come back to. If there's ten frames in there, and they've got four frames of honey, you do not want to pull it. You want half that box to be full of honey, or you'll starve them out during the winter. Okay. But we, yeah, we just use a five-gallon chicken water. And more Twelve feet. So it's like the peak of the top, basically. Almost exactly. A little, little shorter than that. Yeah. I'd say. So I, I thought it would fit, because this is, I didn't see how wide it goes, but uh -huh. say this is six feet. From the edge, from here, here to the, that's six feet right here where my boot is. Okay. I need my I mean, that'd be kind of cool if it was close, right? All right, let's do this. You stand back, I'll put the uh, pot out there. Okay. See where you think it looks good. Okay. Kind of tell me where you want it. And Dee Dee, if you got anything to say about it, just chip so. right in. Here's one thing. Maybe a little further up away from the house, do you think? Just kind of pull it back just a little bit, like at an angle or yeah. uh, just parallel. Should we audition some other trees around? I could put out some other apples for you. Are these little baby pears on here? Pretty sure it's a pear tree. Yep. All right, buddy, you go over, you ready to go plant some trees? Okay, very good, very good. Here we go. I'm gonna start, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's not too shaky. Okay, keep going. Here comes the trees. You're doing great. Point it up. Uh -huh. All right, we made it. 
here's where our trees are gonna go. I gotta get to digging. We bought uh, several apple trees. We bought four different varieties. And we had an arrangement that we really liked. And then we thought through the design and how big these trees are gonna get and realized it wasn't going to work and that they need to be at least 15 feet apart. I was Googling on my phone and we decided that these are semi-dwarf varieties and so they need to be at least 15 feet apart. So now we have where there's going to be three trees each 15 feet apart and then we can carry the orchard this way. Now we're only gonna do these four this year. We also put the pear tree in front of the red cottage, but we have to get this tree here out before we can expand it more this way, which we can do maybe next year, do some peach trees as well as plum and who knows what else. I grabbed this rosemary plant. It was $18, but with the amount of rosemary, I justified that I would spend that much just buying it not on a plant. So I'm gonna stick this in one of the corners of my garden, not in one of the raised beds and just start start using it. I grabbed hydrangeas. These are for the barn. I'm gonna plant this mint behind the house because at our last house we had mint. Obviously it just takes off and it takes over everything, but I like that. And so I'm gonna put this out there and just have mint year after year. And then a few more starts and some blueberry, no not blueberry, blackberry bushes. And then I'm gonna plant quite a few more seeds as well. My flowers that I started indoors, they survived the frost that we had. We just put a, a sheet over them and they're looking good. I also started indoors these tomatoes over here. And they also, we had to put blankets over them and straw, but they made it and they are actually looking pretty decent. I started these back in March from my Baker Creek seeds, so I think they'll, they'll do well, looks like it anyway.